In my last video on the full Sonos Arc surround sound system, I got a ton of comments and feedback saying that a traditional surround system would absolutely destroy the Sonos Arc system. And I did mention this quite a few times in the video itself, but I guess some people felt the need to comment that anyways. However, that gave me a really good idea and I think it'd be good to kind of go over what the benefits are of a soundbar system and what the benefits are of a traditional surround sound system. So let's do that right now. Starting out, I want to go over exactly what a soundbar is and what the benefits of soundbar systems are. So starting out, a soundbar is basically a bar that has speakers inside of it. All sound bars are gonna have at least two speakers inside, and some of the extremely high-end ones can have upwards of 12 to 15 speakers. Really just depends on the brand and how expensive that unit is. And I just wanna say, almost any sound bar is gonna be a significant upgrade from just standard built-in speakers from a TV. Any sound bar is gonna absolutely make a big difference compared to those tiny little speakers that are in flat screen TVs now. Let's talk about the pros of a sound bar system. Now first off, they're extremely easy to set up. Typically, they only require a single cable to get the sound from the TV to the soundbar itself. Now that cable could be an HDMI cable using HDMI ARC, could be digital optical, digital coax, RCAs, auxiliary, and some people say you can use wireless through Bluetooth, but I really wouldn't suggest that. Some of the higher end soundbars will actually have HDMI inputs on the soundbar itself. So you plug in all your devices to the soundbar and there's a single HDMI cable going out from the soundbar to the TV. So the soundbar gets all the audio signals and it simply passes through the video signal to the TV. The second thing is that they're extremely convenient. Now you're not having to pick out multiple speakers, you're not having to run wires to all those speakers. It's just a single speaker, a single bar that you run a single cable to. It makes it really, really simple. Now, also, some of the subwoofers that come with soundbars are actually wireless. So if you wanted to have a subwoofer in the back of your room, usually you'd have to run a cable to it. Well, with most soundbars, it's wireless, so you don't have to worry about that either. And the same thing goes for the surround speakers. Now, not all soundbars have surround speakers. It's usually the higher end models that allow you to either add them or they come with them. But 99% of the time, these speakers are wireless. And when I say wireless, I mean, they're getting the, their audio signal wirelessly from the soundbar. So yes, you're gonna have to plug them into the wall because that's how all electronics work, but you don't have to worry about running a speaker cable all the way from the front of the room to the back of the room. It makes life really, really easy and convenient. Now, the third thing is that they can blend in very easily to a room. Uh, normal speakers are kind of gonna stand out a little bit, typically because they're, they're larger, uh, sound bars, sometimes you can barely even notice that they're in a room. Some of the nicer sound bars can actually be quite stylish and fit the room extremely well. And the last thing is that sound bars can be extremely cheap. Now, yes, you can go out and buy a $50 sound bar, but that's not really gonna work that well for you. I mean, it's gonna be barely better than the TV speakers, but if you spend a decent amount of money on a sound bar, anywhere from $300 to $600, you can get an excellent soundbar system that's gonna sound very good for majority of people. Now, of course, you can buy a very high-end unit like the Sonos Arc system, where you're spending $1,900 or so, you're getting an amazing sound quality and a very, very convenient setup, where you're literally only plugging in five cables in total, and you have a very nice and complete surround sound system. However, a traditional surround sound system at the same price of $1,900 or so is gonna blow the Sonos Arc or any comparing system out of the water. That's just fact. Let's talk about the cons of soundbar systems. Now, first is, of course, if you're not spending a significant amount of money, then you really can't expect a soundbar system to come anywhere close to a traditional sound system. The second thing is that you really can't upgrade a soundbar system all that much. Now there are exceptions with like the Sonos system and uh, Bose systems where you can add in wireless speakers, you can add in a wireless sub, but it's not the same as you know changing out the front speakers. If you're not happy with the soundbar itself, then you have to just buy a new soundbar. The third thing is the wireless connections on wireless subs and wireless surround speakers is not always the best. Um, for instance, with my Nakamichi system, I did have some issues there. I was able to solve them with some troubleshooting, 
but it didn't work flawlessly. With the Sono system, it works flawlessly, but that's also triple the price of the Nakamichi system. So I would, I would pretty much expect it to work flawlessly. Now with some of the cheaper units, um, it's kind of hard to tell. Sometimes you're gonna have these issues and there may not be anything you can really do about it. Now let's move on to a traditional surround sound speaker system. Now, any surround system is gonna require a receiver or an amplifier. Most everyone's gonna be using a receiver, so that's what I'm gonna to refer to from here on out. Now, when I'm saying traditional surround sound system, I'm typically just referring to a 5.1 channel system, and that means that we have three front channels, a center, front left, and front right, then we have two rear speakers, and we also have a single subwoofer. But this can easily be expanded if your receiver has enough power. So you could easily add in upward firing speakers or ceiling speakers, you could add in additional surround speakers, another subwoofer, etc. Let's go over all the pros of a traditional speaker system. Now the first is of course that they will have a superior audio quality compared to sound bars. And that's just end of story. If you set up a system right, it will have better audio quality without a doubt. The reason for this is that regular speakers have a lot more space for the drivers to move. So when you look at a speaker box, typically, you know, they can be pretty bulky. You can see extremely massive ones and you can see very small ones, but the more space that a driver has to move in an enclosure, typically the better sound it can produce. Continuing with superior audio quality, a traditional system is gonna have a much wider sound stage. What that means is that you can place the speakers much further apart so you can better uh, kind of hear things move across the screen. So if you're seeing a big explosion or gunshots go from one edge of the screen to the other, you can actually hear that move across a lot better than you could from like a 40 inch or 45 inch sound bar. You'll also have a lot more power involved. Now, sound bars typically only have a few digital amplifiers. Um, Sonos, there's a lot of digital amplifiers, but with this, you have a very large dedicated unit to supplying power to all your speakers. So if you use a really nice audio video receiver, then you're gonna be able to output a ton of power to all your speakers, thus making them louder and making your system sound better. The second biggest thing is that you have more options for speakers themselves and where you place those speakers. There are hundreds and hundreds of different options for normal speakers out there. So you have a ton of different variations to choose from. You'll definitely need more room, but you do have the option to kind of place these speakers where you like. Now there are certain, you know, kind of frames that you need to stay within, but you can move speakers out a little bit. You can set them up at angles. Uh, with sound bars, you're very restricted. Now you can even use in walls and in ceiling speakers. So we've done this with multiple projects where we use, uh, in wall speakers for the entire front. So you can hide those behind a projector screen. You can even just put them there, put a nice grill on them and kind of blend them into the wall very well. Same thing with in ceiling speakers. You can put those right above where you're sitting and it's gonna be very disguised. No one's really gonna notice them and it's gonna sound very, very good. The third thing is upgradeability. Now we already talked about this a little bit with sound bars and a little earlier, but with a strong enough audio video receiver, you can definitely expand your system way further than what you initially wanted. So if you have a 5.1 system with enough power, you can easily expand to a 7.1 system, 7.1.2, 9.2.4, as long as your receiver's strong enough and has the available outputs on it. The fourth major thing is price. Now we talked about this a little bit already, but there are very cheap receivers and there are very cheap speakers. There's also very expensive speakers and also very expensive receivers. But the nice thing is that you have a lot of options to choose from. You could get a very nice receiver, start out with very cheap speakers and kind of work your way up over time. There's also an extremely good secondhand market out there. So you could buy used speakers that are only two, three, four, five years old and get a very good discount on them compared to the normal retail price. And the fifth major thing is longevity. Now, as long as you're taking care of your system, so you have your receiver plugged into a UPS, surge protector, power conditioner, all of that, making sure it's getting clean power, it's protected, you're not overpowering or underpowering your speakers, then you really shouldn't have that many issues. Your speakers should be able to last many, many years and they should retain their sound quality very well. Now let's go over the cons for a traditional surround sound system. The first and major thing is they're not a super simple setup like a soundbar is. The main reason for this is all of the cables that have to be ran. 
So if you're using a 5.1 system, let's just keep it right there. So you have three front speakers that you have to run the speaker wires to. That's not that difficult. Those can be hidden pretty easily. Now, if you want to have surround speakers, then you need to find a way to get that speaker wire all the way from the front of the room where the receiver is at, all the way to the back of the room. Now, for professionals, this isn't that big of a deal. But for the average Joe who doesn't really know what he's doing, there's no easy way for him to figure out how to do this. Yes, you can read, you can spend time watching videos and trying to understand how to do it, but it's still gonna be a very big time investment and a lot of people aren't gonna opt for this when they can buy a simple soundbar and connect two wireless speakers to it really easily. The second major con is picking out all the different components. Now, if you're just buying like a home theater in a box system where all the speakers come together, yes, that's typically pretty simple. Those systems aren't amazing, or you can buy like a nice speaker package for $1,200, $1,500. So those speakers are picked out for you, but you are gonna pay a premium for that. If you wanna hand select your speakers, then you're gonna have to do some research on power constraints, um, are the sound profiles gonna match, things like that. And for the average person, that's not that simple. And the third major thing is that there is a steep learning curve to increase the performance of a surround sound system. Now, what I mean by that is, uh, yes, some AV receivers do come with a calibration mic and they help you set up everything and they help calibrate the speakers. Sometimes they work well, sometimes they don't, depending on the receiver. But if you want to properly set everything up, adjust the EQ settings, things like that, that's a steep learning curve. And for the average person, like I said, they're not gonna spend the time to do all this. So they may be unsatisfied with the speaker system that they just spent 1500, 1800, two grand on, and it doesn't sound as good as it possibly could. Now, kind of wrapping things up, sound bars are really meant for people who may not have the ideal room layout for a traditional system. They want a very convenient plug and play type system where it's just a single cable from the sound bar to the TV and everything's working fine. It's not too complicated to set up. They want a very minimalist looking system where you don't want everything to stick out like a sore thumb in your room. You want a very sleek and nice looking design that's very easy to do with sound bars. Sound bars are not meant for audiophiles. So if you're an audiophile, don't buy a sound bar because you're probably not gonna be happy with the audio quality that you get from it unless you're spending ridiculous amounts of money on passive sound bars or these really expensive sound bars that most consumers are not even buying. Now, traditional surround sound systems are meant for people who have the right room layouts for this. If you have a very uh, more rectangular room, you're okay with having the speakers out in the open and kind of can be an eyesore to some people. Uh, you have to be okay with all this. You have to be all right with running all these wires from your front speakers to your rear speakers, your subwoofer. If you wanna do height speakers, then you have to worry about all of this and be willing and able to run these wires unless you want to hire a professional, which can get extremely expensive very quickly. In general, if you want the best audio quality possible for the price, then you want to go with a traditional surround sound system. If you're all right with uh, good audio quality, but not the absolute best, and spending a little bit more money to get a really nice soundbar system, then go with that. That'll work well for you. But if you want the best audio quality possible, you're an audiophile, you love listening to music, and you want the absolute best booming system that you can make, then go with traditional surround sound system and spend the time to find the correct speakers, run your wires, and set everything up properly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did cover some controversial topics here. I think it's kind of split in the middle where some people are absolutely in love with sound bars and want nothing to do with traditional systems. And there's people who are absolutely in love with traditional systems and think sound bars suck altogether. I think it really just depends on the person and exactly what they're looking for. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click like. If you didn't enjoy it, click dislike and tell me what you thought. Tell me what I can improve on to make these videos better. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please click subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.